Hi there, and welcome to today's video. Um, we've had to restart a couple times. The first time I found an embarrassing amount of chocolate on my face when I rewatched part of it. And then the second time I realized my camera was crooked. So it's a work in progress, but we're getting there. <laughs> um, before I start today though, I wanna say we're gonna go over the beginning of a purge for kids toys and I want to suggest that you go back and watch last week's video if you haven't yet because it's I think very important I keep seeing this reel going through Instagram of a mom or a girl sitting in the midst of a huge pile of stuff and she's like wrapped in a blanket or totally looking overwhelmed and it's because she lost her motivation to purge and who has that not happened to I mean <laughs> I don't know how many times and then I'm overwhelmed. My family is overwhelmed. So definitely go back and watch last week's video because I talk about a couple ways to avoid that or maybe get past that stage um, of a purge where you don't have to feel that way. Um, so hopefully go back and watch the video. Hopefully some of those steps will help. But today I'm excited to talk about a toy purge with our kids' rooms and I, the, that week between Christmas and New Year's, I did a purge through most of the house. Um, and my kids' room was what I started with because I find that if their room is not clean, it spills into every other part of the house. And most of their toys are kept in their room. And so <laughs> I start with that because I feel like that is the the focal point or the the center of a lot of the mess. So, um, I do also bring my kids through it and they are learning to purge and they're learning the steps of what to do as well, because number one, I don't want to just get rid of their stuff. They'll, I don't want to be that mom. Okay. If you're that mom, that's fine. I am too like, oh, I don't want to be that mom. I'm too sensitive about it. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to let them have a say in what we keep and what we discard. Um, and I also want them to be able to do it by themselves. Even now, my kids are six, four, two, and zero. The, the four month old doesn't really care that much what I keep or get rid of. <laughs> but even now they'll come to me and they'll say, mom, I haven't played with this for a really long time. I want to get rid of it so that there's room because they know then there will be room later on for something new. Um, or they just know too, their room is much easier to clean up. And I'll show you some footage in a little bit of the before and after and how long it took them to clean their room after the purge. Um, but a couple of questions to ask yourself. And if you go through um, below, I have a toy checklist linked and that's gonna help you um, with some of these questions on that as well. Um, but the first one is, does the toy have more than one purpose? I am a big fan of toys that are open-ended and it can be, something that they created their own story with they can build with it I'm not a they can dress up with it I'm not a fan of the huge toys that there's really only a couple ways they can play with it so my favorite toys my kids have a dress up trunk a lot of things go into the dress up trunk um, but I mean it's imaginative play and they can dress up however they want they can throw things in together and make different costumes every time um, so dress up trunk I'm a big fan of the kitchen toys um, my six-year-old still even likes doing this sometimes playing restaurant and um, so kitchen toys uh, building things poly pockets um, and I'll show you later how I organize some of those things uh, but very much open-ended they can create their own story they can build a town they can create a store in their room those types of toys are my jam so does the toy have more than one purpose have I seen my kids playing with it if I've only picked it up and that's my relationship with the toy <laughs> and I've never seen my kids walking around playing with it that is a warning sign for me um, not that it's that big of a deal, but you know what I mean. 
I want to be able to see, yeah, they're playing with it. They're getting use out of it. Um, they know it exists. Will it last at least a year interest wise? So, you know, all those cheap toys they get from the dentist and the doctor and all those things. A lot of those, they last a week and that's fine. And I'm great with that. And we throw them away when they break in a week. And that's not a big deal. But when I go through the purges, those are some of the things we're looking for. Those broken little pieces, um, those things that they played for with a week and they're done with it. We get rid of some of those that no one's going to be interested in this in a year. Now, my kids are kind of nicely spaced with age so that kind of when one gets out of it, the next one wants it. And that has worked well. But also, will it last from child to child or are they just done with it? Uh, do I truly have space for it? I like to follow, if possible, we don't always follow this. I let my kids, kids kind of fudge on it a little bit. But the two thirds rule, uh, keep it only two thirds percent full. Two thirds is a fraction, I'm sorry. 66% <laughs> full or two thirds full um, so that you can put it away easily. Uh, can you just pop it in, pop it in, pop it in, or is it overflowing so you have to keep jamming it down, jamming it down? Um, and we'll talk about that some next week too. We're going to talk about over-organizing um, and how to organize and create a space for things. But right now, as I'm purging, do I actually have a space for it? A couple motivators I give my kids. Now, they have gotten motivated by in the past by um, a lot of times we don't get new things unless they get rid of something or if we're say at the thrift store and they find something they love i ask them where is it going to live like where's its home do we have a space for it um and they just know that's just the rule uh, with along with some other rules because i don't usually let them buy a whole lot of toys because they get them from everywhere else <laughs> but where's it going to live um, do I have space for it? So, but a couple other motivators when they're thinking about getting rid of it, besides getting something new, is giving it to someone who is in need or someone who will love it more. My mom recently moved to our area and before she moved, she got rid of most of her kids' toys and she has lots of grandkids that come over and play. And so I said, hey, do you wanna give this to Oma and you can play with it at her house? I haven't completely asked her how she feels about it yet, but she doesn't seem to mind. <laughs> and then my kids get to go to Oma's house and they get to play with all these toys they forgot about. It's a win-win. Uh, but even say there's a kid that's younger than them at church or at school or, or maybe a family that you come across and you know, oh, they, their kids would love this. Um, I encourage them to be generous with their toys and I don't need all of these. I can share them. I can give them to someone else unless it's something they love, obviously. Um, sell it and give them the money. I've done this before. Uh, one year my daughter got um, secondhand, which I don't mind at all, Polly Pockets, but they were huge. They, there was a, a huge unicorn and a huge um, swimming pool and a huge museum, like three of them, and they were huge. And we have one space for Polly Pockets and Hot Wheel cars, and they all go together because they're the same size and they play with them together. And I, I just showed her, I was like, these don't fit. And I, was, I said, if you really, really, really love them, maybe we can find a new home for them, but they just don't fit right now as it is. And so she sold them. We, I took them to a consignment shop and got some money for them and I gave her that money and she bought other brand new Polly Pockets that she had been really wanting. So um, that's something I use sometimes. And then pay them per bag or per box. I've never actually done that, but I think it's a great idea. Um, if you fill this bag, you can, you know, get five bucks or a dollar or 50 cents or $10, depends on how um, motivated you are <laughs> to have them get rid of it or how much they value money. Anyway, just a couple tips. Now I'm gonna take you through um, a couple videos that I made while I was doing my purge and I'm gonna walk you through some of my thought process as I go. So this is what my house looked like just after Christmas. Trash, 
um, dirty clothes, clean clothes, presents that haven't been put away. <laughs> it was kind of overwhelming and I was definitely feeling the need for a purge. So I did my base level clean, tried to get caught up on some laundry, did some trash um, clean up. Definitely suggest doing that before starting a big purge so that you don't get that overwhelming feeling. Um, this is what we call the baby's room and um, we use it for all sorts of things. Not the baby, but that's what we call it <laughs> because it has been the baby's room. So anyway, uh, we just got base level clean, tidied up, and um, went through and did organize some of the drawers because I realized that my baby had grown out a out of a lot of things. So here's what it looked like. Uh, again, kids already have stuff out again. <laughs> but it, I, I could have left it at this, but I realized I needed to do a deeper clean so my kids weren't overwhelmed when they were trying to clean up. And I had systems that just were not working for my kids to actually be able to clean up their room well. And so we went through and they helped me purge and we got rid of just a, a few boxes and we reorganized and redid some systems for them to work. This, by the way, is their sentimental drawer. Highly recommend having one for stuff that you don't know what else to do with. So we got systems that worked for them. <laughs> Here the room is a mess again, but I challenged them. Can you clean it in 15 minutes? I did bribe them with M&Ms. They cleaned it in 14, and this is what they did all by themselves. I don't think I did. Oh, I might have helped them. Oh, no. So I did help with f putting a blanket on the bed and pushing the mattress under, but otherwise that was my six-year-old and my four-year-old. And they even did some of the baby's room as well in that 14 minutes. So I do strongly suggest creating a system that works for your kids. Um, if they're their toys, they need to learn the responsibility of, oh, it's I got these out and one needs putting them away as they get older. I have explained to my six-year-old, yes, the two-year-old doesn't help very much, but you did not help me very much when you were two. <laughs> so they get added responsibility as they get older, right? Um, but I would suggest kind of look at your systems. We are going to talk about systems next week in the organizing video. Um, but I do suggest paring down the toys to what they actually realistically play with. And maybe, you know, maybe put some toys in a box and put them in the garage for a little bit and say, hey, let's see if you really miss these. My son today asked me for one of the toys we had put in a box during that purge. I was like, oh yeah, sure, I'll get it for you later. Because I'm not going to just get rid of all their toys um, when they want them, but we are going to get rid of the other ones that they've already forgotten about since that purge two and a half weeks ago. So, um, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, like, subscribe, uh, and comment. Let me know uh, what would be helpful to you or what was helpful to you. And please download the toy purging checklist because um, that will be helpful for all four weeks of this series and hopefully make it not quite so overwhelming.